I'm making this video to address an issue with the CZ Scorpion. This issue appears to be quite prevalent, but it is the only significant issue I've seen with this platform. The material the bolt is made out of is a little too soft and gets deformed and peened around the firing pin safety block and at the back of the bolt right here where it gets contacted by the hammer on its rearward travel. Here are some pictures that are examples of this damage that are worse than what is seen on my bolt. Uh, apparently, the deformation around the firing pin safety block can get so bad that the block gets stuck down in the bolt and becomes inoperable, creating an unsafe condition. I want to go over what can be done to the factory bolt to mitigate this deformation. I am not saying this will completely prevent it, but it will certainly slow the process down. There will be timestamps in the description so you can skip to the work on the individual components, but I think it's important to understand the nature of what's going on and the mechanical system and how everything interacts before we start modifying anything. Uh, certainly this will help us see exactly where we can and need to make improvements. Looking at my bolt, you can already see this deformation uh, is starting. Um, I only have maybe 1,500 to 2,000 rounds through this gun, so it's a pretty low round count. Um, you can see my firing pin safety block is still fully functional. I just love drawing pictures, so I figure I'd break out the whiteboard for this. So uh, here's your firing pin safety block, and we are looking at it just like this in the bolt and it moves up and down in this channel. Um, so what's happening is, is this material is kind of getting squished and mushed into here. And so what will actually happen is you'll build up a little ridge of material and over a long amount of time, the firing pin safety block gets stuck under this squished burr of material that forms around the firing pin safety block hole which means that this is, uh, you know, permanently pushed down and uh, disengaged, which allows the firing pin then to go forward. So that means that your firing pin safety block would be um, inoperable at that point. So I feel this goes without saying before getting into this project, but I'm going to say it anyways. Um, this is more of a intermediate operation here, uh, and it's for those of us that are more mechanically minded. Um, and have experience tinkering on our firearms. Um, if you have any hesitation about anything you see here, don't, don't even attempt it. Um, it could create a really unsafe uh, condition with your firearm. Let's take a close look at how all these parts interact with each other. So, the bolt uh, sits about like this in the gun over the lower. The hammer swings up, comes forward, hits the firing pin right here. The firing pin block is disengaged, allowing the firing pin to go all the way forward, igniting the round, it's direct blowback. Bolt starts coming back. This edge right here hits the hammer and recocks it and moves it back downward to get caught by the disconnector. And it slides back, slides forward, picks up another round, chamber it, you're all good to go, right? So, you can see this little lever right here as part of the trigger pack moves up and down as I pull the trigger and that is what pushes the firing pin safety block up which allows the firing pin to go all the way forward. So really the only things that are interacting here are the bolt, the firing pin safety block, the hammer, and this firing pin safety block lifter. There is some things we can do to make this system happier. Anywhere two components touch each other, we want to minimize friction. As two components rub past each other, you can see this nice line right here where the hammer rubs on the bottom side of the bolt as it cycles and also rubs on the firing pin safety block even though this little post right here is what gets actuated by the lifter and the trigger pack. Anytime there's significant friction between those materials, there's, you know, the chance that some of this material will get picked up or moved or squished or pushed around. Um, and actually you can kind of see some lines where stuff has been scooched and moved along by the friction. 
this is pretty beat up at this point, but this was a sharp angle. So um, if we radius this, it will, uh, you know, change where it gets contacted as the bolt moves back and resets the hammer and spread out that impact on it. So pretty much the gist of all this and what I'm saying here is that anything that rubs or contacts another metal thing, we can polish to reduce as much friction as possible. We can put a radius right here to uh, mellow out the contact and the contact angle uh, and that changing contact angle when it's moving backwards and resetting the hammer. And then the other thing we can do, and you can kind of see it's already like started doing this itself, is we can chamfer this side right here, right? Nothing's contacting this bottom half of this firing pin safety block hole. So we're only concerned about this top half, this top crescent right here. So we can actually put a little chamfer on that. And so what that'll do is it'll prevent material that's right on the edge from getting squished in. And another thing it will do is if um, material does start getting squished, it will take longer for it to get all the way to the point where it's over the firing pin safety block hole. Another thing we can do is obviously polish this firing pin safety block. And then also you can see slight damage right there and slight damage right there. We're going to take this edge right here and chamfer it so uh, it gets contacted in a nicer way by the hammer as it slides back and forth. And then of course, we can polish all this area of the hammer. You can see where it's been mushroomed out a little bit there. And we can polish this lifter, which contacts this post right here. First order of business is to get this little feller disassembled. So cover the extractor here so it doesn't fly out and shoot off into oblivion or hit you in the face. Pull this pin, pull the extractor, pull the spring, you can set those aside. And then under the extractor, there's a little pin right here that you drive out from this side. Whoa! And once you do that, your firing pin and firing pin spring will shoot out the back. And then your firing pin block right here and firing pin block spring will come straight out. We also need to take the uh, trigger pack out of this guy. 1.5 millimeter hex key, pull the set screw, pull one side uh, safety lever and pull the safety cross shaft out. And then a three millimeter hex key loosen this bolt just like so and we can disassemble this more but we're going to be able to do what we need to do on the hammer face and this lifter face right here without further disassembly tools that i'm going to use to do this are um, some uh, fine india stones i have a super fine uh, nice hard ceramic stone I got some little uh, needle files, got a Dremel tool with, um, you know, polishing pads, sanding drums, and some little grinding bits and whatnot, and then also some scraps of like 400 grit, 600,000, 2000 grit sandpaper, and uh, you know, safety glasses. I don't like metal in my eye. So all I've done here with this little, uh, you know, kind of conical grinding bit is um, just put a slightly larger chamfer just around this half of the uh, firing pin block hole, just like this. I'm going to use a quarter inch sanding drum to go ahead and put a nice radius around this back edge right here. And of course, I don't want to radius it so much that it you know, gets down into the uh, firing pin hole here. OK, 
Okay, so that is now a nice smooth radius. You know, it's probably an eighth of an inch or something like that, maybe uh, 330 seconds. So that's really all the Dremel work that needs to be done now. Um, I'm just going to work on getting the chamfer and the radius I just created really nicely polished. So to start the polishing of this area to make sure I get a really nice smooth finish on it, I'm just going to wrap some 400 grit around something flat and just work it back and forth and work my way up through the finer grit sandpapers wrapped around a stone. And then I'm going to get into stoning it uh, to really polish it smooth. Here we go with the, uh, the buffing wheel and a little bit of uh, polishing compound. Oh baby, that's brighter than my future. You can see the chamfer that I put and polished all the way around the right half of that firing pin safety block hole. You can see this nice radius I put on the back of the uh, bolt here. And then also the nice polish I put all along this face right here where the uh, hammer is going to be sliding. And so you may say to yourself, well, uh, you just took all the uh, nitride coating off there, which makes the surface of the uh, metal harder, uh, which true. Yeah, I did, but the damage was already there to the point that it um, had deformed the bulk of the metal and it was, uh, the nitride was already starting to wear off. It was, it was doing it no favors in terms of adding extra strength. So the fact that I got rid of all of it, not a big deal. So um, the bolt is done at this point. The firing pin safety block, the right side of it as I'm holding it is what rubs over the top of the hammer as the bolt reciprocates. Um, so uh, this half from here around back up to here is going to get a slight chamfer on it. And then I'm going to go through the same sanding and polishing process to the whole top of this that I just did to the underside of my uh, bolt. Okay, there we go. You can see it's not much, but there's a slight chamfer all the way around the side here, and it's nice and shiny. So that piece is done. So looking at this trigger pack, um, we're going to uh, obviously touch up this corner a little bit. There's some mushrooming of the metal here. I'm going to uh, clean that up with a file. You, those are going to get a little bit more radius and polished out. The whole face of this will get polished. The whole face of the firing pin safety block lifter right here will also get polished. Okay, last little part is done there. I added a bit more of a radius to this area, this area, and this area. Everything's been polished to a mirror finish. Um, you can still see some dents and stuff from where it hit the firing pin. You're not really going to get rid of those without taking a bunch of meat off the face of that. So just polish it, do your best. The lifter right here is nice and polished mirror finish. So that's pretty much all of the parts polished um, and some chamfers and radii added. A note on reinstalling the firing pin block and then firing pin and firing pin spring. Once you have the block and the spring in there, the firing pin goes in and all these um, cutouts, these notches, go facing um, up the top of the bolt, what would be the top of the gun. And you can see if you've done it right, the firing pin block will come all the way out and actually retain the firing pin in there. And then you have to push the firing pin back in and depress the firing pin safety block to get it in far enough that you can drop this pin in. So there we go, you know, confirm your function, make sure the firing pin block works, um, extractors all back in, everything's polished, ready to go, everything's nice and smooth, and give this the best fighting chance of, of m mitigating uh, more deformation on this bolt face and around this firing pin safety block here. All right, 
so that's all I got. That's all the work I've done. And, and, you know, I like to think I know what I'm doing, but this whole thing really only took me 45 minutes to an hour. And this should make a huge difference, uh, in, in terms of the, the longevity of these, um, parts, uh, wearing with respect to one another or the deformation that may be occurring around right here. I don't see what happens to the deformation of this bolt and this firing pin block is that big of a deal. This I, I've, uh, you know, kind of preemptively doing some of this stuff so it doesn't get to the point where the firing pin safety block gets stuck down in the bolt or something like that. I wouldn't expect that to happen for five, six, seven, eight, I mean, 10,000 rounds, maybe something like that. Um, like I said, I, I don't even think I got 2000 rounds through this gun, maybe 2000. Um, and the deformation around everything was, you know, it was pretty, uh, minor and, and normal, what I would consider normal. Um, but now I've just made it uh, where I really don't have to worry about that for a long time. Of course, if I ever, you know, strip the gun down to clean it, I'll take a look. It'll probably be fine. Um, but I mean, that really didn't cost me much. Uh, if you have some basic hand tools and some basic know-how, you can you can probably mitigate a lot of the, the deformation and damage that's going to happen around um, this area. You know, I hope this was interesting, informative. I hope it gave you a... a the better understanding of the mechanical workings of this system and how all these parts interact um, and, and maybe a way for you to uh, smooth some things out and ensure a little bit more um, longevity and reliability out of your CZ Scorpion. Thanks for watching um, and I will link in the description down below to um, the previous videos I've done on this platform 